Professor Brian Brown's research shows that vulnerability fosters good emotional and mental health. It is a sign of courage. We become more resilient and brave when we embrace who we truly are and what we are feeling. The Vulnerable Scientist Podcast is a space for scientists to tell their honest and authentic stories. I am your host, Saranya Kerry, who happens to be a scientist, informal science communicator, and I help scientists create personal websites. If you want to support this show, go to www.patreon.com slash the vulnerable scientist. You can also follow this podcast on all social media platforms at TV Scientist Pod. I'm imagining. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm imagining if it was me who was told that. Like this, mm-hmm. what you're seeing now is, um, is you looking back then. You're like he he wasn't meaning it in a bad way, mm-hmm. and he probably didn't didn't understand the gratitude the. The gravity of gravity his words, of, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and how mm-hmm. how much impact it will have made on you as a person. Mm-hmm. He, um, I, I, I don't know at that moment because you're speaking out of like someone is like someone in the third or someone overlooking a situation. But mm-hmm. at that moment, what were you thinking at that moment? Oh, at that moment, I'm not going to lie, Sarah. Mm. I was honestly worried. Mm. And now you know when my friend, you know, it's it's one thing when you are confident, and then someone tells you that I wasn't super confident. Mm. I was like from day one. Um, first of all, the fact that my English had had, had improved like a lot, mm. but it was not to the level where it was not to the level of my friends. Remember, mm. they are coming from top. Schools. This is top cream of the mm. nation. Like the the way people speak and the way people carry themselves, the way people dress, even. Mm. The, I was. So remember, I'm coming from a village. Now, actually, it was the first time, just to give you a context, it was mm. the first time crossing Nairobi mm. when I was going to Jekwa in 2010. It was the first time in my life fasting yeah. or going past Nakuru. So yeah. that's how, like, that's how unexposed I was. And even, and coming from a, a, a very conservative village, I didn't, I didn't own a pair of trousers, right? <laughs> Ah. And you can, I want you to picture these girls from some village, from yes. some conservative village. So mm. I had like long dresses mm. and some, not even well fitting, right? Because mm. where, where I come from, like people frown upon, you know, these tight fitting clothes. Yes. And now you can tell how in, in campus, in campus where people are well dressed, people want to look, people want to belong to certain social class. Mm. You, you can tell like how many friends I had. And you can tell how many people paid attention to me. And mm. just because of that, you are aware that the way you speak, the way mm. you dress, the way mm. you move is, is kind of repelling people from you. And so that, that hits on your confidence. You don't oh. know what to do about it, when, but you're just aware. What, how do you realize that? Like, okay, um, you're coming from this place where it does not bother anyone, how, how you dress, how you speak. Like everybody mm-hmm. speaks like that. Like, mm-hmm. An accent is not an issue. Uh, mm-hmm. Then you come to high school, maybe you realize something wrong with my English. But mm-hmm. now you're in Nairobi and you're surrounded by boys. Mm-hmm. And um, you you come from this culture of how you wear and dress. And now you realize, mm-hmm. how, what's that point? Like when you realize that the way I dress, the way I speak is probably pulling people away from me. I don't know. As in, at, mm. at what point do you realize that? Because ah, I'm Sarah, imagining you didn't I, know I, that. I, <laughs> no, 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 I think you are aware. I think by that time, by the time you are in campus, you are aware. Especially mm. as a woman in, a, in, in an environment where there are males, mm. or there are like boys, mm. you realize, first of all, in the number, in the number of people who hit on you, right? Mm-hmm. Compared to the number of people who hit on your friends. Yeah, because there so were very few females in your that. class again. When we were very few females in our class. Mm-hmm. And, and doing like a, a, a very hard course. And, and so that also plays, play, plays a role. But like you can tell, you can tell in time, you, you, you know, you know, I think by the time in campus, you are super aware of what's going on around, around you what's going on in your body, how you look, how you, you, you want to be appealing, right? You want to be liked. 
and you want to belong to that social class where everyone wants to belong to. But for some reason, the way uh, you, you can't get there and you know, right? So now it's up to you to maybe like intentionally climb that social to that social status mm. or just know that there is that and then you are okay. Sorry, but no, not in a mm. just to say that it's not it's not like a super sad story. Mm. Like yeah, it's, yeah, not, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not a super sad yeah. moment, yeah. but just setting the context of where I was where I was coming from. Yes, yeah. But you, you know that mm. I have to say that that kind of changed a bit when so when when the class realized that there were very few people who had who had scored so many A's, more than ten A's out of sixteen course units. Mm. The respect started to come mm. in a different After way. First year. So it was after first year so it was no longer now it was no longer about how how gladys looks you you i think you know you know like there is this person you despise uh, mm. uh it could be subconsciously just because the way they look the way they they talk and then you realize that man this person accomplished something that very few people can accomplish mm. and then the, the respect comes whether yeah. you like it or not and for me i think that's what happens I, uh, people at the end of first year, I still looked. I mean, I had improved. I I I, I owned some pair of, of jeans now, right? Mm. And I even pierced my ears. Mm. I think I permed my hair. You know, I was trying to be like a a, a city a city mm. girl. Mm. And and I, I and and even even with that, I think my my academic performance also gave me it gave me bonga points, if you like. Mm. It. Let me use bonga <laughs> points. And. Mm. Um, and I will tell you mm. that it, that's the I would say that's one of the reasons why. Uh, and I will talk about when we go to the next category of 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 uh, category of spheres of mm. my uh, university life, mm. and that is leadership. I was actually elected to be a, a class president, and mm. I served for like five years. And wow. I think that my, my my academic performance kind of played a role in that. Mm-hmm. And so the story. Uh, the story changed and became happily ever, uh, and we lived happily ever, ever after. <laughs> sweet. So, so the story changed from uh, sour to sweet. Yeah. So imagine is the main you, point. You used the strength that you had, your academics, to yes navigate all these other things. Mm-hmm. And I'm imagining uh, that gave you motivation to even do more. Uh, in oh, terms absolutely. Of your schooling. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. that's where you're getting the respect, the, these opportunities in leadership, the people are looking at you again, instead of assuming you. Mm-hmm. I know that feeling. I really know that mm-hmm. feeling. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Sorry, yep. I wanted to ask something about accent. I've never asked someone this. I've never even asked anyone, not even in the podcast, like generally. I've never yeah. asked someone, but... How is it like being mm-hmm. the person who has an accent mm-hmm. and that people disapprove of? Mm-hmm. How do you deal with that? Do you have struggles making a point when you want to make a point, but you remember you have an accent? Does it affect you in any way? Ooh, and how do you deal with I, that? Mm, well, now, uh, right where I am now, it doesn't it doesn't affect me mm. because it's. I, I just realized that the pressure that we give, the pressure that we have to speak certain kind of way, mm. I think it's coming from, it's coming from somewhere mm. and it's not a very good place, yes. right? Mm. Uh, because when, uh, I think we were even chatting about this with our friend, with some of my friends, mm. like our athletes when they finish running, right? Mm-hmm. And then um, they are forced to, sp- I don't know if it's forced, uh, but anyway, like the way the way you you speak in English, mm. and then people would be like, ah, people would be feeling certain kind of way, be almost like ashamed that the mm. person cannot converse in English in a certain mm. accent. Mm. But if you if if it's another person, say for instance, is is if it's a French accent or mm. Italian accent, mm. I don't feel. I mean, from my experience, I just feel like people don't put the same kind of shame yeah. in accent to it. But when it's when it's Kikuyu, Kalenji accent whatever other accent oh people are like God. ah that person can't speak well but I if a french s- person comes and speaks the same english in french accent we, it's we, not a, we are okay yeah it's not an it's not an issue it's, it's yeah we don't even think about so, it <laughs> oh my nope. goodness that is so true we don't think about it so i think and and uh, i think uh, as i grow older or, mm. or, or as, as as i learn more mm. i just realized that the pressure that people are 
even us, we, we put on people I do. Mm. When people speak and I'm like, ah, that person speaks with an accent. And then you have certain kind of picture or the way you see them kind of changes. Mm. Um, I'm not saying I'm, I'm a saint on that. But I mean, ha- having 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 that knowledge, I know I know that, that that kind of pressure is coming from not a very good place. And, and it's something that we should we should not we should not be having uh, and the fact that i have an accent mm. is because i mean the accent that i have is because i speak kikale i speak swahili and i speak uh, english i'm mm. trilingual mm. right yeah if i was only which is really cool was born <laughs> yeah and we should and you should be praised right, right? Mm, and if yeah. i was only bo- if i was born and i was uh, taught in english and i spoke english from when i was when i was young then i would be speaking english in a different accent Mm. And so now, just to answer your question, yes, I I know that I speak three languages, and and those are the two languages kind of affect how I speak my English, and I'm I'm good with it now. But to be honest, if if we were to go back to high school, mm. when people used to laugh at me, it mm. did affect me. It did affect how how I, I I thought maybe I was I was I was not intelligent enough, and that's why people were laughing when I spoke. But right now, I really don't care because I, I, I know the accent is coming from the other two languages. Do you want to learn about the strategies for enrolling, thriving, and excelling in a PhD program? Dr. Gladys Ngetich has written a book on the PhD journey with lessons from various PhD students across the globe and from her lessons as an ex-Oxford PhD student. Dr. Gladys is now a postdoc researcher at MIT. For you to get a chance to get a free book, post your favorite podcast episode of the Vulnerable Scientist podcast on any social media account and tag the Vulnerable Scientist social media account with the hashtag the Vulnerable Scientist book giveaway. You can now pre order the book on Amazon. Or as an ebook on Kindle Cobol Dalia ETC. You can get more information on this book on www.gladischepkirui.com/books.